Okay, looks like we're live. Um, all things being equal, if I can believe the little display, we're live and happening on a Monday night. Just mixing up, well, did Monday night last week as well, and it's, it's for the same reason. I have a, a physio appointment tomorrow night, which class, clashes, clashes. That's not a difficult word to say. Why did that cause me so much grief? Anyway, um, yes, physio appointment tomorrow, so I go live tonight. So, hello, uh, who's here? Brett, Tendai, Luke, Big Boy, Fox of Fate. Hello to all of you. Um, yes, I, uh, um, yeah, so mix it up. Well, on Monday. And of course, it's April 1st, so uh, this was not an April Fool's joke. God, speaking of things that um, weren't April Fool's jokes, um, Jim Carrey getting in an internet fight with Mussolini's granddaughter. God, that was weird. Hey, Dr. Obama and Kath Catherine, you're still on a bus. Okay, fair enough. Dr. Obama, am I excited for tomorrow night's budget? Yeah, it's right to call it budget um, because those fuckers are going to lose election and uh, nothing they say will count for shit. And it's got to be full of like, oh, we'll give you money. We'll give you money, money, money. And then they're going to go with this big scare campaign of, ooh, Labor's going to take money away from you. Labor's going to take money away from you. I, I can't see it working, but they are going to make a, a, a last desperate uh, bid to um, maintain power and uh, they will do anything uh, in that attempt. But uh, I, I can't see it working. It's like they're just such a fucking train wreck. The way they consistently go, well, this thing Labor wants to do is, um, is this ridiculous thing John Howard invented to buy an election. Um, people getting a tax refund for tax they never paid. It's this franking credits thing. And they're going about, oh, these people will lose well, $20,000 a year under labor. It's like the only way someone could lose that money under labor's plan is if they had at least a million and a half, probably much more in untaxed assets like investments and property and whatnot and i'm not losing any fucking sleep over some aging fucking boomer who's got millions of dollars in assets uh and yeah i don't know i honestly don't think that one's gonna work i mean obviously for that very small number of people who will actually be affected by it i'm sure it is an effective thing to say that but um Labor just has to get the correct message out and the media has to be honest and just like, no, every time the Liberals go, oh, you're going to affect this. And they love saying pensioner when it's not a pensioner. It's a retiree, certainly, but they're not on a pension because they're getting, you know, $100,000 tax free from investments every year. It's like, it's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Oh, Brett, in your neck of the woods, they're trying to save the train wreck by promising money for trains. Oh, dear. Yeah, they'll definitely do it. Is it CrossFitter? You're right, the bribes do work on some. Uh, and as I keep saying about this election, it would actually be foolish to treat it as a done deal. Uh, it's um, very, 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 very unlikely they'll win, but it's not impossible. Oh, Bobo, Miss Lenny's granddaughter. <laughs> This is about one of my favourite things I've seen on the internet for ages. Um, Jim Carrey got in a fight with uh, uh, Mussolini's granddaughter. It turns out fascism runs in the family. Mussolini's granddaughter is, in fact, a fascist. And um, Jim Carrey had done this thing as like, a, you know, he fancies himself as an artist these days. And he had this drawing... Uh, it was like a, a recreation or an interpretation of a, the famous photo of uh, Mussolini being, being murdered by the people and hung upside down in the public square by his heels. And Jim Carrey 
at his drawing of this with something on the lines of, well, those people who seem to want to rush towards fascism need a reminder of where that ends up. Hello, Mindy, you come say hello to the people. Uh, and yeah, so Jim Carrey posted this thing saying fascists will end up getting strung up in the town square and Mussolini's granddaughter pops up and goes, you're a shithead. I'm just like, oh my God, who the fuck? That's the world we live in, that the granddaughter of one of the most notorious fascists of the 20th century will pop up to tell the world she's a fascist and she gets upset uh, when people point out uh, her grandfather was a fascist murderer who fucking deserved to be strung up in the town square. Ha! Uh, Catherine, I haven't seen that one. Liberals doing a scare campaign saying Labor's going to cut money from the disability uh, scheme. I can't imagine uh, anyone falling for that. Like, that's just absolutely ridiculous. Like, yeah, you know, I'm about taking money off rich people. Yep, absolutely, that's going to happen. Uh, I can't see anyone falling for the Liberals saying, oh, Labor will defund the NDIS. Uh, we'll look after it, whereas Labor created the NDIS and the Liberals have been fucking eviscerating it. Clapping for chlamydia. Is it is it true Slovakia elected first woman PM today? I don't know. I didn't see that in the news. Uh, Slovakia does not feature that highly in the news over here. Although, if they elected their first woman PM, I guess that would make a bit of news, but I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Oh, my God. She's so obsessed with getting the scratches. So obsessed with... Look at it. Now scratch me here. Now scratch me there. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. You're so pushy. That's okay. Clapping. She annihilated the VP of the European Commission. Okay. Good on her, I guess. Oh, Dr. Obama, I heard about that Liberal Party video that had a gunshot and everyone's saying, what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, Luke, you're looking at some NDIS paperwork. Well, I hope it works in your favor, man. Eh? Oh, Catherine, you're confirming about the Slovakian woman PM uh, being elected. There you go. Didn't even know they were having elections in Slovakia. Because as I said, they don't feature very highly on the news. I did see, is it Ukraine? They're having a presidential election and the front runner is a comedian uh, who played a guy who got elected president on TV and he's looking like he's gonna win. Like wild. Ah, clapping, cooking dinner while watching, nice. And one of my light and easy dinners. I couldn't pretend. It's funny because it's it's quite good food. You can put it on a plate and pretend you cooked it yourself when you just microwaved it. It's steak Diane with veggies. Ah, this foxification. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the right wing of the Liberal Party has made a concerted effort in the last five years to drag Australia down into the mud. And Scummo is just such a fucking liar. At least Abbott was straight ahead and not pretending to be anything other than he was. Scummo is such a slimy fucking liar. In a lot of ways, he's much worse than Abbott. Like his policy ideas are as bad, but the way he does it with his slimy double talk makes him feel more dangerous. And yes, that... Oh, I tell you about the same-sex marriage plebiscite. Uh, fucking infuriates me when um, uh, Turnbull still goes to go. Oh, I did it, and it's like, dude, you did the completely unnecessary and divisive thing. Uh, it should have just been an act of parliament that would have got across the board support. Um, uh, you made life fucking miserable uh, for uh, gay people. It's just like you, the public vilification that went with that was ridiculous. 
Hey, Jude, how's it going? Well, for you reckon shorten won't be any better. Well, the policies of uh, Shorten and the Labor Party are um, much, much, much better for my worldview than the Liberal Party. If you're just saying you don't think you'll like Shorten as a person anymore, that's fine. That's a personal thing. But policy-wise, there is no comparison between the Liberals and Labor. Um, uh, Labor has shortcomings. There's no question about that. But just in terms of uh, well, fucking everything, the environment, uh, industrial relations, uh, minority rights, uh, anything apart from giving more money to people who already are the richest, Labor's policies are leaps and bounds ahead of the Liberal Party. Um, my personal view, their biggest failing is their uh, refugee policy. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Lib. Uh, uh, Brett. The Libs are, are just going to fall in a heap. Um, and I think Labor's strategy for quite a while has been Oh, don't say anything much of anything. Just just uh, stay under the radar and the Libs will destroy themselves. And clapping, have you ever thought of running for office? No. Politics is awful and soulless. Um, you know, I, I certainly couldn't be a member of any political party. And so, yeah, you, theoretically I could run independently. But, um, you know, I just have it'd just be every, like my policies on anything would never get discussed, just everything. We're here. You know, he calls people cunts all the time. Yeah, I do. I do. In my defense, they're cunts. I mean, I don't I don't say it to people who don't deserve it. Um, but uh, it's just like politics is so obsessed with surface bullshit. Uh, I just can't do it. Like, I, I'd, I'd have to be sort of the lefty equivalent of uh, Donald Trump just steamroll over people and go, yeah, you know what? I don't fucking care, okay? I don't care. You're talking shit. You're pretending to be upset about something you're not even upset about. I don't care. I don't care that I said something that upset you. I don't care that you think it's bad I say bad words. Um, fuck you. <laughs> it's just like, uh, it, it, it's just, oh, my God. Public office would just be the fucking worst. All right, all right. I drop something. I have to pick it up. Ah. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, um, you raise a good point, Catherine, in that the minority Labour government led by Gillard was more effective, far more effective, in terms of governing and passing legislation than the majority... Um, uh, LNP government was because they're a minority party now because they lost so many seats in by-elections. They only had a one-seat majority. And would they lose two or three? They lost at least two. Um, but, yeah, they lost at least two by-elections. And um, so now they're a minority government. All the crossbenchers said they wouldn't do a no confidence against them, but they're a minority government. Tendai, I do not remember Google's minions, April Fool's joke, and how it's backfired on them. I, in fact, that does not ring a bell at all. Not even a little bit. I, I, I don't remember that at all. Miss Fox, because you think the Libs will be a shitty opposition. Well, for me, the big thing is their first term. I want them to be a really small opposition. Like, I want them to get fucking smashed in this election. I don't know if that will happen, uh, but there is a good chance um, uh, they will get absolutely smashed. Uh, and um, I am hoping... Like, top of my list of people that I want to lose their seat uh, is Tony Abbott 
and Peter Dutton. They're the ones I want out because they're the most fucking evil and toxic people. I, I always have to look at this number. Uh, oh, ta-da. Australian Parliament. Just like refreshing my brain on the numbers. I look that up quite regularly. Um, want the the Wikipedia has all the numbers on it. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully uh, Josh Weidenberg goes too because he's a fucking piece of shit. Um, Dr. Barber's over the. Who will be the leader in opposition? It's impossible to tell because who the fuck knows who's still going to be there? Um, I'm not um, enough of a uh, authority of the Liberal Party to know who's even going to be there. Jude, how many birthdays has Mimsy had? We don't know exactly. She's somewhere between 13 and 15 human years old. So... The parliament, uh, with the 150 MPs, the government is currently 73 of those 150. And to have a straight up majority, you have to have at least 76. So they had 76. Uh, and they've lost three by-elections. That's what I thought it was, two or three. Labor's got 69. Nice. So to win government, Labor only has to pick up seven seats, which is probably going to be relatively easy for them. Uh, so the most likely outcome is Labor get in with the majority. Look, I think if Labor on only pick up 10 seats, that would feel pretty ordinary to them. Um, so that would put them, let's say, a, just for the sake of making up a number, I think a moderate, very moderate, and in fact, disappointing win for Labor would be if they got 80 seats. Uh, and that would, so that would reduce the government down to about the LMP down to about 60. And I think they would lose a couple to independents. So if Labor had about 80 seats in the next parliament, I reckon the LNP would be on somewhere between 55 and 60. So in other words, a pretty big gap between them. Uh, my bet has been that Labor will pick up about 20 seats. So I'm saying uh, 85 to 90 seats in the parliament and the LNP being reduced to less than 50 seats in the parliament. So, and that's, that's, that's like a good win. That's a really solid win. Um, that's a, you know, get really fucking drunk. That was a big win type thing. Uh, and it, th that would be a fairly dramatic win that would put Labor about 40 seats ahead of the LNP, which that would be very humiliating for the LNP, and I want them humiliated. Uh, mind you, some WAGs have been predicting an even bigger one, like of the current 73 seats, uh, the LNP losing 40 or more of them, so being knocked down to around uh, 30 seats and Labor having about 100 and there being considerably more independent crossbenchers. Uh, there's eight on the crossbench now. So what would that be if we said 130? Uh, that's, yeah. There are a few predictions that there could be as many as 15 to 20 crossbenchers, like the Libs could, and Nationals could lose a lot of seats to Conservative independents. But, you know, we'll find out sometime in the next month and a half. Catherine, how long since Labor was um, back in? Well, two, two parliaments, so seven, eight years. It's, it's four-year terms federally, isn't it? 
Luke, will I have a Monday cocktail? I don't know, man. Maybe. Uh, Le Heretic. Yeah, well, I'm only doing this on Monday because um, uh, I uh, have a physio appointment tomorrow, which we'll interfere with. Ah, Dr. Obama, they're increasing the uh, parliament to 151 members. That makes sense because 150 means there's a chance of it being 75-75. I mean, it isn't because of independence, but um, if it's 151, there's more a chance of there always been someone with definite um, majority. Three-year terms, is it? For some reason, I thought it was four. So... Oh, 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 look it up. Australian uh, elections. Um, so, uh, twenty nineteen. When when was? How often is there an election? Oh yeah, three years. Okay, cool. Okay, do you know why I thought four? It was only three. There we go. Maybe that, yeah, maybe it's four years in state elections. Maybe that's what got stuck in my head. Ray Liotta, she didn't choose to be the granddaughter of Mussolini way after. Well, okay, my joke is first, no one went after her uh jim carrey made a reference to mussolini being strung up and she piped up and went fuck you and so why go after it because she's a fucking fascist and she defends her grandfather's fascist fucking legacy so fuck anyone who's oh, why go after it because she's a fucking fascist and she defends one of the worst fascists of the 20th fucking century pretty fucking straightforward why you'd go after someone like that what a dumb fucking thing to say. Music Avida, you're having um, uh, a busy Monday. Flight sim, brass band, and now the live stream. Oh, get fucked. Go on Google, you fucking idiot. Jesus Christ. When did she defend him? For fuck's fucking sake. Oh, yeah, Dr. Obama, I could be the Trump of the left. Just go off. Just not give a shit about anyone and talk shit about everyone. Uh, but just actually, in terms of policy, actually care about people who are less well off than me and um, not be so fucking self-serving. Yeah, Eric, I think that's actually the real Ray Liotta. Yes. Is fucking Google. Look up fucking Twitter. Where the fuck do you think she fucking defended him? Yes, Mimsy looks cute, however he. Clapping for complete. Did, was, did I get angry about her a decade ago? See, I don't even remember. I've been angry about so many things. She, well, she, yeah, because she's been elected in the Italian parliament and whatnot. But it's just like, oh my God, the fucking stupidity of the world today. Um, like, being mean to fascists is bad. Being mean to... Like, you know, we, we sank from... Oh, is punching Nazis bad to... Is egging white supremacist fuckheads bad to... Oh, is just being mean to fascists bad? Get fucked. <laughs> Oh, a Susan, where did Susan Boyle come up? Yeah, the heretic, nobody knew exactly how blatantly the fascists and the white supremacists and the Nazis were going to use social media as a recruiting tool. Nobody really saw that coming the degree to how blatant they would be. Um, I mean, I know, as, as some of these fuckheads have pointed out, I made a video, got in my first year on YouTube, because there were 
uh, a couple of people um, making pro-Nazi videos uh, on YouTube in the early days of YouTube. And there were a bunch of people with his lobbying group saying, oh, we ought to lobby to get the Nazis banned from YouTube. And they didn't take Nazis seriously at that point. They didn't have any major sort of political power anywhere. And I just said, and I actually said, the, you know, no, 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 let, let's have the Nazis out in the open and we can fucking take them apart. Um, let's um, not ban them from the platform. Let's just call them out and fuck them up. And, I mean, I said that because the Nazis weren't particularly fucking dangerous 12 years ago. Um, things fucking changed, quite honestly. People say, oh, you said, once you said before, don't kick the Nazis off the platform. Now you say kick Nazis off the platform. Yeah, because I didn't realise at the time how dangerous Nazis were going to be. But they're fucking dangerous. They've inspired multiple mass shooters they're radicalizing young white men in particular, and they use these platforms to um, spread hate and violence. And like I said, there is no two ways about it. Uh, they have been directly responsible for multiple mass shooting. I sure I see. The, I, sorry, I thought that's what I said. It was that I didn't realize they were dangerous. Like 12 years ago, they didn't have any strong political platform. Uh, they didn't have, there weren't politicians around the world uh, who had power, who were being openly fascist. Uh, and I didn't see them as a threat. I was wrong. People say, well, you said that once, that we shouldn't kick them off the platform. Uh, well, what changed? Well, they got dangerous. I, and the big thing is, I was wrong. Uh, it, they were going to use the social media platforms to quite aggressively um, uh, push their fucking evil and recruit and radicalize mostly young white men. That's a good point, Harry. The first um, open fascists um, gaining power were Golden Dawn in Greece. Uh, but you, you look at all through Eastern Europe, uh, like Bolasano, whatever his name is in Brazil, um, and uh, 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 Duterte in uh, um, Philippines, and of course, um, Trump. Really, Hoda, would Trump have been elected if the Nazis had been banned years ago? Um, I don't really think the two are directly connected. Trump, I think it more worked the other way, that Trump's election really emboldened them and made them go more, like, I mean, he had fucking Steve Bannon, an actual Nazi, someone who actually preaches white supremacy and genocide. Uh, he tries to keep that on the down low these days, but he posted multiple things online um, preaching white supremacist ideology um, and the fucking extermination of the lesser races. Um, and he was a main Trump advisor at one point. It was fucking sick. Uh, Dr. Obama, I have not watched the Al Jazeera doco on um, uh, the NRA and One Nation. I've seen grabs of it. I should sit down and watch all of it because it's, from the summaries I've read of it, it's pretty on fire. It's pretty well. I um, I thought it was one of the things, like Pauline Hanson is just turning the thing into a conspiracy theory and it is absolutely going to work with her supporters. The truth doesn't matter to them at all. Um, She's saying it's all, it's all edited and dubbed, and the Al Jazeera who instigated the whole thing, he just kind of laughed in one interview and said, well, we could put the whole uncut thing out. I don't think they'd like it. I'm going to make them look worse. Luke, what am I drinking? That was my fruit cup. Uh, 
some tropical fruits and lemonade that I made. Um, nice, 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 nice. I guess Storm Problems, I want to see, back when I made my um, uh, anti-Nazi video, like 12 years ago, um, a couple of people told me, because I, and I was getting some pretty aggressive messages, uh, I was getting uh, um, warnings. Uh, these Stormfront guys are pretty worked up about you. So I um, actually joined um, the Stormfront discussion boards just to keep an eye on them. And there was a little pocket of them that were talking about me. Nothing ever came of it. But I have to admit, uh, the high point of just following all the discussions on the Stormfront boards was a, a really spirited discussion on whether you could really be a proud Aryan uh, and like curry. <laughs> Apparently some of the English Nazis um, had to admit that they really liked curry and they worried if that made them race traders. I just thought that was hilarious. It's just, whoa, what the fuck? Ray, my thoughts on David Lanholm being elected in New South Wales. Well, first, I didn't know he'd been elected in New South Wales. I know he stood for election there. David Lanholm is a lying sack of shit. Like, people go, oh, he's a, a he's just a staunch libertarian. No, he's not. He's a fucking liar. He's just a right-wing prick who doesn't want to follow the rules. He, he doesn't want to have rules quite who he's super keen for other people to have restrictions to play place on him it's like saying like he does all this shit about he's been he's taken money from tobacco lobby the coal lobby and everything uh and he's he's awful his whole no government interference is a complete fucking lie um because uh yeah he he pushed for fucking government regulation of wind power because of the completely non-existent wind turbine system. So he was acting on behalf of the people who uh, paid him to lobby on behalf of the fucking fossil fuel industry. He's a liar and a hypocrite uh, and an absolute piece of shit. He's not a libertarian at all. He is just for obnoxious, rich, white cunts getting everything they want. <laughs> there it is. You think Twitter has made increased levels of crazy mainstream? 9-11 conspiracies? Well, of course, they go back to 9-11. <laughs> so we're going, yeah, that was the, a big one through the noughties. Yeah, in the middle of the Obama stuff, the Bertha shit, and to which they still say is a thing. Ah, yes, and then you've gone into the white genocide. And people still say that, the Great Replacement. Yes. Yes, it's real, real worry. Justin. Well, I think you see the young men who call themselves libertarians, like you say, conservative who wants to smoke bongs, um, uh, I don't think Lanholm does bongs. He's, he's, he's just a piece of shit. See you a bit later then, Tendai. Milk to Alaska, Destiny Stream. I have no idea who Destiny is, um, but certainly with the majority of these right-wing uh, fuckheads, uh, debate is a waste of time uh, because... They don't need to debate. They just want to. I mean, and this is what I'm doing as well. They, you, know, you just want to bleep their um, uh, talking points, and um, as what I love about these, you know, alt right types and the, the various mutations of that fuckery. Um, uh, uh, they always talk about being. Uh, logic driven and oh your feelings don't matter over facts and yet their arguments are never factual their arguments are almost um counter factual they um when they start citing science and stuff it's usually either 
really outdated science or they have the level of comprehension of a fucking 12 year old yeah justin ben shapiro he's full of shit he always goes on about you know facts over feels facts don't care about your feelings and his arguments are completely emotive completely unscientific um and it's just it's just like they indulge in magical thinking things are true because they want them to be true it's absolutely ridiculous milt alaska you're saying destiny is a leftist capitalist i suppose there are a lot of people who are lefties who still believe in the capitalist mind and i mean i um my view is capitalism in its current form is uh is pure evil and unsustainable uh if you if you wanted to go with capitalism it, it's kind of like when you get communists who say oh you know real communism has never happened uh the communist party in russia perverted it and communist party in china perverts it now but real capitalism you you look at the philosophical writings that described and defined capitalism adam smith and whatnot um and the crony capitalism that happens now the oligarchies running everything it's it's like the complete opposite of the actual classical concepts of um capitalism hey there buddy how's it going if you're just one thing united states atheist activism uh justin um i gotta be honest man every atheist activist i've ever seen is an asshole. um by almost anyone's definition uh i'm an atheist as i said before because you're an atheist i go well, on the big question uh of is there a creator uh is there a god figure that created us my belief is no but i also say it does not matter uh i am a, i i think it's a self-evident statement that every religion in history is wrong uh and obviously so because they're in such conflict um everyone's convinced their one is right and everyone else is wrong we go well it's actually far higher odds that they're all wrong um but um yeah i'm not an atheist activist and i won't sign up with uh the atheist activists online was it gary and hang up sign settings god's not real life's meaningless well actually that is literally the literal answer to that is yes but i'm talking about the ones who um uh go online and make all their youtube videos about why atheism is great and religion is dumb and whatnot um i'm yet to find an atheist activist who's not an asshole and i include richard dawkins in that richard dawkins is an extremely intelligent person um he has certainly uh uh written and spoken about the atheist position more eloquently than most but he has massive blind spots that from what i've been able to see he refuses to acknowledge and he spouts off quite aggressively and wrongly on topics about which he knows nothing it's because it's that trap of you know he is really smart in one area he assumes he's really smart in uh, all areas. Uh, yes, Shirazi, the American separation of church and state is horseshit. Uh, Justin, call me poisoned by the loudest voices in the atheist activists then. I'm just going off the ones I've seen. Uh, 
Uh, and obviously, I don't know everyone who's very vocal about atheism. Like I said, there's a 99% chance that on the question of religion, I basically agree with them. It's just the behavior of the high profile uh, atheist activists sickens me. Um, the fact that virtually all of them are misogynist fuckheads, um, the fact that virtually all of them get way out of their depth and pronounce their great wisdom on topics that they don't understand at all. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I'm a big fuck those guys and because they are almost always guys. So, and um, they're almost always misogynists and they almost always have this hideous reeking uh, bigotry uh, about them as well. Are they hurting? I agree. Oh, that's the other thing. The, the, they the the loudest voices in the atheist world also tend to be transphobic as well. Let me talk a second. The atheism is the same as religion it comes to belief and defense. I um, I think it's hilarious the degree to which these loud um, atheists are terrified of the word belief. And they will say, they will say the stupidest shit um, because they react really badly against the word belief. They go, no, no, it's not a belief symbol. Well, yeah, it is. There's there's a bunch of stuff to do with the you know the, the core stuff that the atheists spout that they can't possibly know for a fact. Uh, they've accepted the findings of scientists who they believe have rigorously followed objective scientific method. Um, but any atheist is taking a lot on faith. There's, there's a lot of evidence and they follow that evidence uh, in what feels like a logical way, as I do. But... There's a degree to which you're taking stuff on faith. You're taking the work of scholars and scientists on faith. I can't check the work of paleontologists. I can't check the work of geneticists. I can't check the um, work of scientists who studied evolution. Um, they're specialists. I take it on faith that they're not lying to me. Um, and, yeah, I've always found it amusing, the really um, extreme negative reaction so many of these mouthy atheists have to the word belief. It's just a word. It just means you believe something. You are taking something on faith. Um no one knows everything. If you trust in the scientific findings of someone else, that's a leap of faith. Uh, you're uh, taking on the mantle of these things. Like I said, you know, I, I believe the concept of there being a creator is absolutely meaningless. If there was a supreme being who created us, they wouldn't give a shit what we do. They absolutely wouldn't give a shit. Um, all, all the religions and their talk about gods wanting to be praised and worshipped and blah, blah, that's a human conceit. There's no way a god would... I mean, you know, maybe there's a much more advanced race that created us in a test tube, like a science fiction movie. Who knows? And maybe they think we should worship them because they're so much above us. But they're not a god. They're not a supreme being. They're just a more advanced being, and they have the failings of vanity. The idea, these people talk about a perfect, pure god 
that apparently is as vain and shallow as humans. At least but you look at the Norse gods and even the Greek and Roman gods, they were actually really open. All their gods had very human failings. Their gods were jealous and shallow and spiteful and cruel and lascivious and whatnot. But later religions have taken on this whole idea of an omnipotent, perfect godhead. And it's just like, oh, fuck off. That's not real. It just isn't. Timothy, how's it going? I haven't been playing any games lately. I did go to the comedy festival on the weekend. Um, uh, although I um, only, uh, I went, uh, it was like went out with Mrs. Angry. We went to, um, uh, there's a thing at the Imperial Hotel at five o'clock they call five at five. They have, uh, it's like a showcase, five, comedians do 10 minute sets and with the MC who does funny stuff at the start talking up you get to see six people try and do their or six acts because sometimes it's more than one person uh, you get to see six acts who uh, have a show in the festival um uh try and uh convince you to go and see them so it's a good taste that you can see someone and there were a couple we of the five there's probably two that putting serious consideration into going to see their show. Um, and then we also saw uh, another young comedian, She, but she's finished her run already. And we also, between those two things, we went to uh, uh, um, uh, a cocktail bar that also did food called the Trinket Bar. It's near ACDC Lane. Fuck, it was good. It was really good. And so we didn't go to as many comedy shows because we said they're having food and cocktails. Isaac Butterfield, I see the question. I don't know that much about Isaac Butterfield. Um, I had the impression he had a go at me at one point. Some of his little lackeys got sent after me um, because he, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not that up on him, but I get the vibe he's definitely anti-feminist. At the very least, I did see recently, at, at the very least, he made a video saying uh, Fraser Anning's an absolute cunt and fuck that guy and Egg Boy's a hero. So he's not all bad because a lot of those fuckheads who attack me with their anti-feminist shit are also racist as fuck. I mean, seriously, the Venn diagram of misogynists and racists is almost a circle and it's like again with these violent mass killers um uh when they're openly motivated by misogyny you look into their past and there's always extreme racism and when they're motivated by extreme uh bigotry or religious zealotry there's always uh uh, misogynist violence in their past as the commonality thing. Yeah, nobody, I thought Butterfield was right wing, but like I said, at least he fucking railed against Fraser Anning for being a racist piece of shit. Um, so he can't be all bad because some of them, uh, like the normal, the usual suspects who fucking have a go at me and send their little legions against me, um, uh, they're not just misogynists, they're also racists. Um, so whatever else about him, at least Isaac Butterfield. Yeah, I thought he, he must be anti-feminist. I'm sure there was an incident where he had some sort of a go at me and sent his little minions after me. Uh, but at least he's not racist. Ah, oh, Timothy, that Death Standing game. I'm kind of fascinated with that. Um, I definitely want to look at it. Oh, yeah, Dr. Obama, he made a, attack the government for banning my lady not us. Yeah, he's a white guy. He's a, he's a white guy, free speech guy. Yeah, because it's just a fucking academic exercise to a straight conservative white guy. Free speech is just an intellectual exercise. Now, now I am all, now we've seen where these fucking hate preachers end up. Uh, it's impossible to ignore. I am all... Uh, fucking for um, 
uh, not letting them profit from their fucking hate. Bjorn, you reverse Lovecraft. Okay, I didn't know Lovecraft was a feminist. I knew he was hella racist. Well, you still want attention. This one still wants attention. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're getting some very interesting. See, I've not watched uh, a, a lot of uh, or hardly any Isaac Butterfield. Like I said, I get the impression at one point he had a go at me, and I had his fanboys attacking me, and I did like it, and I did see a bit of the video where he attacked Fraser Anning for being a racist piece of shit. <laughs> Lovecraft named his cats the N-word. That was famously the bomber captain. Was it the Dam Busters guy? The guy who led the bomber squadron uh, uh, from the Dam Busters mission famously named his black dog the N-word. I think it was a black Labrador. But, um, yes, it's a funny old world. I tell you, I, at, at the risk of winding someone up, hey, Safa, how's it going? Um, at the risk of winding someone up, because I did, there was that weird thing. This was a couple months ago in the live stream. I had a bunch of um, friendly Geordies fans having a go at me that I'd saying I'd done something. And I certainly had discussed him in, in live streams and never actually done a video saying anything about friendly Geordies because I wasn't that into him. Um, but, of course, he's getting more and more um, uh, of a, a following. He's getting more of a profile. And because uh, he's abrasive, he's getting uh, more and more people, particularly people who are on, you know, because... Uh, Friendly Geordies is very pro Labour Party, very um, anti Liberal Party, um, but he's upsetting other people on the left who are having go at him. I'm trying to think what the funniest thing I saw, um, and I'm not saying these attacks on Friendly Geordies are fair or accurate, they were just funny. So, you know, if someone has a go at me, um, I sometimes get a real giggle out of the things they say. Um, so that's right. I was, try, I was trying to remember what it was. Someone, uh, there, there was a whole series of insults to um, friendly Geordies. Um, one of them was calling him Pewdie Meat Pie, <laughs> which I just thought was funny. That doesn't mean I think it's fair or accurate. Um, but I do think it's funny. Um, funny things aren't always fair or accurate. Justin, I think it is absolutely true. There are some very broad similarities. So, uh, I mean, not, not very broad because that makes me sound like I'm distancing. Myself. There are a lot of broad similarities uh, politically between friendly Geordie Smith. He aligns more directly with the Labour Party than me. I mean, but uh, in election, I'm uh, a million percent vote Labour, not Liberal. Um, and I'm not a fan of the Greens either, for that matter. I even, particularly this election, I think it's quite important to um, put uh, Labour ahead of the Greens. Um, I do get the impression, and again, I don't know Friendly Geordies well enough to be sure, but I get the impression if you brought up intersectional politics with friendly Geordies, he'd run a mile. Like he, I have seen stuff in videos from him and found myself going, when you talk about that, and I mean like, and this was feminism and race politics, I was like, I can't tell the difference between what you're saying and alt-right talking points. Like when he's talking about uh, party policy and, you know, protection of ordinary Australian and fuck the elites, he's very pure old school Labour Party. But, yeah, when it comes to 
intersectional politics, I get the vibe not so much. Like, I've only ever seen him be quite mocking to uh, feminist politics and uh, racial issues. Uh, but, and I, I have to put the giant, giant, giant asterisk in there. Uh, I haven't watched enough of his, his stuff to say that without doubt. Um, I'm just saying I've, I've seen things that make me feel that way. I mean, um, and again, like when I said some people are on the left attacking, some attacks on him are stupid as fuck. Like he's like at, uh, he's at war with the panel. I don't remember. He, I've seen, he, he supports Van Batten because she's Labour. Um, but he definitely belittles feminists. Uh, and he, he definitely has said Jordan Peterson's a top bloke. Like I said, on the question of intersectional politics, and I haven't seen him say this, but I get an incredibly strong vibe if you started talking to him about intersectional politics, he'd say that's bullshit. Uh, someone who knows him better might correct me, and I stand to be corrected, uh, but the vibe I get from him is uh, that if you, um, if you brought up intersectional politics with him, He'd say that's bullshit. But yeah, so I have to put a really huge asterisk on that and say I haven't seen enough of his stuff because I don't dedicate that much time to watching his stuff uh, to say that conclusively. Uh, I just, yeah, I, I have a suspicion there. I hear if you're saying he's a comedian to excuse anything he says, I have to call bullshit on that because he got in quite a froth about the satire site, Batuta Advocate, which is just a joke site, and he got upset about them running stories that essentially echoed uh, the mainstream media's stuff. And he said he kept calling them a journalistic outlet and said they had a responsibility. So he certainly doesn't get to hide behind comedian if he says the tutor act advocate has to uh, be uh, answerable to journalistic standards. Uh, and I'm not saying he'd say that. I'm just saying this to you. The tutor act of it is honestly shit. I don't read it. I see people sharing it on Facebook. It's a bunch of guys who wish they were the onion. But there are there are a dozen, there are a hundred websites that wish they were the onion. And they think um, they think printing something that isn't true is what satire is, and that is not satire. And I really get the shits with outlets who just do headlines that are not true and they go, it's satire. And I go, no, saying stuff that is not true is not the definition of satire. No, no, get down. What are you doing? You, you can't go up there. Go, go back on your thing. Yes, back on your thing. Ooh, Justin, if me and friendly Geordie's both do a live stream, who are you going to watch? Oh, uh, look, it's Dr. Rama, at least the chaser are, are a bit closer to the game. Again, um, I've never been a particular fan of the chaser. Uh, they've definitely done funny stuff. They've definitely done stuff that I find very funny, but I've never... Well, that was a big yawn, Mimsy. 
I've never been a huge fan of the chaser. David, well, the shovel, same deal. The shovel really wants to be the onion. Oh, nice. Justin, you're having a house party. Sitting up and having some cocktails. I'll 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 be having some cocktails. Don't think I'll be suiting up though. Um, an election night cocktail. That's something we definitely have to come up with. The official election cocktail. I d I don't know if you were here last week, last Thursday. I invented the Brexit cocktail, and I'm quite proud of it because it was really quite yummy. It had uh, gin to represent England, uh, Irish whiskey to represent the very troublesome Irish border issue, uh, had French cognac to represent Europe, and uh, a bitter Italian liqueur, Fernet Branca, just to represent the bitterness of the whole thing. Uh, oh, and I did also have some sugar syrup and lemon juice in it. Uh, and it was good. But much like Brexit, I went ahead not knowing what I was doing. But unlike Brexit, which is a complete fucking shit show, uh, my cocktail was quite good. Uh, something red or something blue. That is a good point, Dr. Obama. Um, oh, yeah, there are some dodgy things that are red and blue. I, I could I could certainly colour a vod. I've got some rock candy. I could I could colour some white spirits whether that be vodka or tequila or gin i i i, I could color that red or or blue <laughs> you think for the 2020 election just be drunk all day yeah well that's that's a whole other story isn't it jesus no I, like i swear to god anyone who predicts uh who says they can predict what's going to happen in the 2020 US presidential election is full of shit. It's just, com it's completely unpredictable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, things could change in the next year and it could seem much more clear one way or the other. But at this point, anyone who um, says they can predict what's going to happen is full of shit. Don't trust them. Is May going? That's the thing. Safra, as I understood it, May basically said she'd resign if they went with a Brexit deal and she'd let someone else, but then they, as I understand, and look, no one seems to actually know what the fuck is happening and what it means. As I understand it, the British Parliament voted against every possible variation of a Brexit deal. Uh, from a hard Brexit through to all the various permutations, and they also voted against not doing Brexit at all. And how do you do that? How do you vote against literally every possible option? It's a shit show. And May did actually say something uh, along the lines of, uh, if the vote keeps like this, I think this house has gone as far as she is basically suggesting the only option at this point is a general election and say one party campaigning on if we win, we will take this steps about Brexit and the other party saying if we win, we will take these steps about Brexit. Um, it is, it's just too strange. The, the whole thing makes no sense. So, yes, Justin, well, we've got, we've got, five or six weeks to come up with an election night cocktail. But I could test some. Um, <coughs> what do I actually have? Um, uh, what do I like? I think the most recent uh, addition to my cocktail arsenal was cognac. I didn't have cognac for a while. I mean, what's what's your classic cognac cocktail? Sidecar, which is one of my favourites. Ooh, a Sazerac. I've not made a Sazerac with uh, 
cognac. Maybe I'll make a Sazerac. It's it's like the Sazerac is the um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, New Orleans cocktail. It's the and it's it's really it's depending how you make it is uh, just an old fashioned with absinthe in it. What's this one? You see here. Yeah, this is saying rye, sugar cube, bitters, and a bit of absinthe. But cognac is someone must have a variation that has cognac in it. Or it just came up as related. I don't know. What's this one? An absinthe rinse, yes. It is, ah, there, wow, okay. This is a cognac recipe. All right. I'm gonna try this, a Sazerac, which is rye whiskey, which I have, uh, cognac, and just a dash of absinthe. And, oh, and um, a sweetener. So I'll put my sugar syrup in. Okay, I better get um, I better get my um, uh, 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 cocktail gear. Yeah, go do that. Well, that's a nice one, Justin. You just came up with cognac, bitters, lemon rind, gin, and sugar syrup. Yes. Oh, you're having a bunch of. I don't really like ginger beer, but um, I. I'm going, I'm going to get my uh, cocktail here. Oh, okay. So you want this, this, and this. Okay. Got my tiki mug, which is not the tradition. If I was a real purist, I wouldn't serve it in this, but I'm not a real purist. So let's see, where's, there's my cognac. Do you want to go cognac? Satisfying cork pop. Cognac. I've never actually had this. This will be a first for me, so that's something for it. All that rye whiskey, which is like a less sweet bourbon. It's an American whiskey, in case you don't know what rye whiskey is. But it's less sweet than bourbon. Um, might dribble the absinthe over the top. Look, so, ooh, where's my, oh, where's my screen? There it is. Bit of this. Ooh, you hear the farting noises? All right. So that just goes on. Um, is it recipe? Is it lemon? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? I'm over 21. Enter liquor.com. Come on. Earth to moon base. What the earth? Websites are one of these stupid things. So rye, bitters, sugar cube. Okay, just some bitters. So bitters, yeah, okay. So, oh, I've got to get my big ice cube from my big ice cube tray. Ah, big old ice cube. Put that in there. Not really clear. If you follow me on social media on Saturday night, <laughs> I posted a picture of an ice cube and a video of it because it was perfectly clear. It was very beautiful. Um, bitters. That's cold bitters. I think I want to put that in. Bitters. Uh, what's this one? A bit of lime bitters. Why not? Just, just to be saucy. Just to be saucy, and I'll bring the absinthe over with me. Okay. Do 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 do. It's good to do the cocktail shake shake. What are we doing here? All right. So what am I made up to? 
Uh, Fox of Eight, Brandy and Coke. That's nice. I know what I um this is my wizard coat, Safa. Look. It's my wizard cloak. It's a bit cold. Went for a walk just before now. I um I try I don't know if you've seen it, there's a peach flavoured uh, Coke Zero out now, or they just call it Coke No Sugar these days um and uh i got a bottle of it because on special is my dark arts look um it's an interesting flavor i don't think i'll buy it again um but it's an interesting flavor i see it's a nice sort of orangey brown color um i'm just going to add a little splash of absinthe the flavor um and uh yeah it was interesting i don't think i'll get it again but i don't know what made me do it but just out of the blue i decided to add some bourbon to the um uh peach coke zero and it was really quite good all right so this is a cognac sazerac Oh yeah, you can see, you can see I've got the little red floaty on top because I just floated a little bit of absinthe on the top. I like that. It worked. Oh, that's pretty good. Mm, yes. Ooh. I think it's the cognac that's quite sweet in that. Feel the power of the dark side. You have no idea the power of the absinthe. Ah. Oh. Mm. You know, there's a little bit of bite from the rye in it, and um, can't get past the absinthe, of course. Um, but it, the absinthe, you, it's, it's good to put just a little bit in, and then it doesn't overpower it, because absinthe is a really strong taste. Not to mention strong alcohol. Those who aren't familiar, this one that I love getting, it's a Spanish? Yeah, it's a Spanish-made absinthe, but they colour code the strengths. Um, green's like a, a traditional... Um, green is a traditional absinthe colour, and the Jacques Thoreau... Uh, Seno or Seno? I think it looks like an N. It's probably not high res enough for you to see it on there. It looks like an N. It's either Jacques Seno or Jacques Seno, uh, but it's Spanish, so I don't know why it's got a French sounding name. But yeah, their green one is 70% alcohol. This red one is 75% alcohol. They have a blue one that's 80% alcohol and a black one that's 85% alcohol. Um, I used to get the black one because, you know, bang for buck, get really fucking shit-faced with 85% alcohol. But the black one tended to, if you mixed it with something, tended to make the drink go all muddy and dark. Um, the, uh, there's an effect called louching. Uh, the traditional way to do um, absinthe, is oh thank you miss foxifications it's an n jacques senna um is to drip cold distilled water through a sugar cube into your glass with absinthe and um you dilute it as much as you want as much or as little as you want um but when water or in fact virtually any liquid mixes with uh, absinthe it goes really cloudy like you see this looks like a clear red spirit but if i poured this into a glass and then put some water in it um it would go really cloudy that effect and i don't know what does it that a chemist might could maybe tell us but that effect is called louching um and the black one tended to just make anything i mixed it with go cloudy and muddy yeah i still you have to like the taste it's a very strong licorice taste an aniseed taste um uh, and I do like the taste of it. 
but it made the drinks very ugly. So I started getting, I tried the blue one, which was not bad, but then uh, the red one, <laughs> I like the red one most in drinks. So it's a mere 75% alcohol. Um, but yes, absinthe is somewhat of an acquired taste because um, it's a very, very strong flavor. Um, uh, yeah, licorice anything. I remember um, years ago, I had some of the black stuff as a New Year's Eve party at AIDS's place and getting pretty goddamn shit faced, quite honestly. And then it got to the stage of the morning where everyone decided to go to bed and I had just poured myself a drink and I was going to bed and I'm going, oh, I'm not going to fucking have another drink if everyone's going, I'm going to bed. And so I left the drink sitting there and I swear to God, the next morning, the whole room smelled like licorice. It's pretty no, we don't get that from Dan Murphy's, Justin. You need to go to a specialist bottle shop. Um, my personal favourite is in the Melbourne CBD um, near the law courts. It's called the Wig Cellar. They have specialty um, alcohols. Um, so I occasionally go there to get something special. That one there, that's a, a French apple brandy called Calvados, uh, which I got from there. And there's another, my, I think it's up there, that there'd be my um, absinthe flavored vermouth comes from there. Um, but yeah, it's not the cheapest place, but it has the best variety. It's not the only place I've seen Jacques Seno, but um, it's a reliable source. Uh, wig, W-I-G, as in the wig that uh, judges and QCs wear because it's near the law courts, so it's called the wig seller. Yes, yeah, so as opposed to W-H-I-G, which was a political party. Oh, yeah, Lion Spider, they know who their clientele is. All those rich bloody judges and QCs who can afford the expensive plonk. Well, Justin, you can get it online. I'm fairly sure. I'm not how a I'm not sure how reliable that is, but you basically need to get um, uh, a specialist. Oh yeah, Harumi in England lawyers do. I'm not sure how it works in Australian courts. Under what circumstances lawyers wear the wigs? Um, I'm not a legal expert. Um, but yes, because we inherited the English legal system, uh, the um, thing. I mean, I, you can you can get absinthe from, you know, Dan Murphy's. They tend to have the Green Fairy one. I think the absinthe they have is about sixty five percent alcohol. Uh, uh, so absinthe generally is a high alcohol spirit because even like, you know, serious spirits, a serious vodka, gin, tequila, and whatnot, it's about 40%. The, you know, the more dignified aperitifs and liqueurs are around 20, 25%. You know, a serious vodka, tequila, gin is 40%, sometimes as low as 30%, but usually, um, uh, Oh yeah, uh, I'm just looking up what absinthe they have. Um, yeah, and some I have seen absinthe that was only forty uh, percent, uh, but um, geez, they're a really expensive one. Uh, one hundred and thirty dollars for a box. God, that's more than I paid. I paid about ninety dollars for that one. So they have the Green Fairy, which is in uh, uh, almost any Dan Murphy's. It's about seventy five dollars. I think that's uh, that's a that's yeah, again that's a, a five hundred mil. Okay, it's sixty percent alcohol. What's this really expensive one? Why is it so goddamn expensive? The Jezebel. Gotta love the name. 
Oh, it's a Melbourne one, I think. An Australian one. Hearts and Tails. It is an Australian absinthe. God, I almost want to support local industry, but it's really expensive. 65% alcohol. 700 mils. Okay. Uh, and the other one, which was 75, was only 500 mils. So that's almost half as much again. So 75 uh, uh, plus, say, 30. You're still only 100 instead of 130. I don't know. I don't think I want to pay $130 for a bowl. I really don't think I do. Oh, my God, Justin, you went through half a bottle of Green Fairy writing a song. That must have been um, quite a song. Oh. Safi, you reckon the lawyers only have the hard liquor after winning a case? I think they have it at lunchtime. You know, I, I, I think they get into the booze on uh, uh, days ending with a Y. Yeah, no, but yeah, $130. See, I'm not that much of a, a connoisseur. It's, it's kind of like, you know, I've got like bog standard gin and vodka and tequila and whiskey. And there's people going like, uh, oh, yeah, get this really good one. It's, you know, it costs $500. No, I can't taste the difference. And hit the hay, Justin. Thanks for dropping by, buddy. Haru, you pay 77 for a gaming headset. That's cheap for a gaming headset. I've seen him for double that. Ha. Oh, my God. Fox of Fate, an entire bottle of black Sambuca for a birthday. And Sambuca is another um, uh, licorice-flavoured one. It's Sambuca, what else is it? Uzo, the Greek uh, liqueur. That's 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 another aniseed flavored liqueur. There are there are a few aniseed flavor liqueurs. Um, this Fox question, Opal Nero. That is that a rum? I feel like I've heard of that one, and that's a rum, but I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> things I didn't know I liked till I started making cocktails: brandy, rum. Um, I very 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 rarely um, just drink spirits straight. Like, you know, yet I mean, I've been in places where you who's a tasting platter of scotches. You can travel around. This one's an RLA single malt. This is from, uh, this is a PT malt from, a, and I can't taste the difference in a straight fucking liquor. It's, it's too strong. Um, and I don't care if any of the bloody, Scotch aficionados don't take me seriously um, because I prefer to put it in a cocktail. That's the other thing, I guess you could, for a variation, um, could uh, try making this Sazerac with a Scotch whiskey. So this whole thing is, um, is you know, like one of my favourites is a, a whiskey sour, which is relatively simple. That's like whiskey, lemon juice, egg white and sugar syrup. Yeah, hello, Mimsy. Right. Um, but you can um, you know, if you if you want variation, you can make a, a whiskey sour with scotch, like single malt. I think most single malt drinkers think putting it in a cocktail is a crime. You do like a blended scotch or an Irish whiskey or a Canadian whiskey or an American whiskey, bourbon or rye. Um, there's also um, a little bit, you get a little variations. There's a South American drink, Peruvian, I believe, um, called uh, uh, Pisco. And that's that's more a brandy than uh, uh, a, a whiskey. But you make sense. So for a good celebration cocktail, you just go with what flavours do you like? I know what my favorite oh, Sazerac, man. That's a that's a good one. My fa my favorite, the ones that are easy to make, 
that are my favorites is a whiskey sour and a sidecar. Sazerac's a good one. Uh, Wow, that's a wild one, Miss Foxification. Ah, Opal Nero is a star anise based one. Yeah, okay, yeah. So that's going to have a licorice flavor as well. If its base is star anise and green anise, maybe softened by the thing, those flowers, elderflowers, elderberry, orange flower, coriander, cinnamon. So I think. Um, Investing in an arsenal for cocktails is expensive, but per drink, you know, it ends up being much cheaper. Um, but uh, if you're making them at home, but getting some decent things, you know, it's like if you're going to make cocktails, well, level one is you need uh, uh, like um, vodka, gin, whiskey. And your other mixes can be non-alcoholic and the next tier you want after that if you're expanding is like brandy rum tequila some people if, if someone's really into uh um tiki cocktails um they'll put rum higher up the list but i think rum second tier for me your first your first requirements are gin uh, vodka and whiskey whatever your sort of whiskey is. Second tier is rum, tequila, brandy, and then uh, um, then you just get you get adventurous. You know, you get vermouth. If you like martinis, you need vermouth. And um, uh, you want like an orange one, like I've got uh, Cointreau, but you can get Curacao or uh, some other orange liqueurs and there's a whole range of bitter liqueurs and um and there's all fruity ones and flowery ones if you drink often do you need more and more to get the same thing yes that's the thing this where you get problem drinkers as in alcoholics will drink uh a volume that would put you or i under the table and they hardly feel the buzz now they are impaired but they're just used to it um, like they shouldn't drive, but they just. But a severe alcoholic will drink a volume that would put you and I to sleep. Um, but I, I, oh my god, I almost almost never get hangovers because I don't drink that much. You know, a couple cocktails spread over an evening. That's all I want. I don't want to. I don't want to get shit faced. I have on occasion. Hey, federal election, I might. Who knows? You might see me the most drunk I've been in ages. Federal election night. You never, never know. Hurry, mocktails are great. Getting the flavors out of fruit juice. Oh, you know what you should do? Bitters, which is technically has alcohol in it. In fact, bitters are often 40 to 60% alcohol, but you only put a few um, drops in it. Um, yeah, Haruhi, if you if you like mocktails, non-alcoholic drinks, but want to get a bit clever, um, find a place that has a good selection of bitters. Like I've got at least six or seven different flavoured bitters around the house. Um, like you, your bog standard ones just there, that's the Angostura bitters. That, that's, that's what a lot of people think of when they think of bitters. But... Um, now, so far, bitters are, are a cocktail thing. Anyone who's into cocktails will be into bitters. As they say, um, bitters are to cocktails as herbs and spices are to cooking. They're not the main ingredient, but they give a signature flavour. Yeah, Fox of Fate, when you're a kid, getting a lemon, lime and bitters. Um, that's a nice drink. But, yeah, if you, if you like making mocktails, um, Invest in some bitters, um, and if there's no stores near you, uh, find a website. There's an Australian website called Only Bitters, and they have hundreds. And seriously, you can take your, 
your mocktails or cocktails next level by getting uh, some specialty um, bitters. Lion Spider, you had an Angostura bitters cookbook. In my cocktail book, there is uh, uh, what's it called? There is a cocktail and it's like called the Trinidad cocktail or something. And rather than um, a dash of bitters, which is normal, this is a bitters-based cocktail. Uh, they recommend a shot and a half of Angostura bitters in um, this thing. And it's like, what the fuck? That is a, and I've made it once and it, I did it with one shot and it's not, there's other stuff in it as well. I did it with one shot rather than one and a half shots. Um, not sure what one and a half shots would have been like. It was it was it was actually okay. I, I, I was I was dubious because bitters you normally like you're a dash or two like drops of it. Um, this thing saying a shot and a half of Angostura bitters. It's like whoa, but it was actually okay. Um, I only made it the once, so it can't have been that good because I never wanted to make it again. But, um, yeah. And I know Angostura make uh, a liqueur as well, um, which I might try one to, uh, Maybe if the Fernet, that's, I've got a bitter liqueur there, Fernet Branca, if I need to make a, a bitter cocktail, I can put some Fernet Branca in it. Um, I had Fernet Branca in the the uh, 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 Brexit cocktail because I decided that um, everyone's very bitter over Brexit, so it had to have some bitterness in it. Um, uh, and, and that was a good cocktail. Um, but yeah, I like being adventurous. Like uh, I was saying about going out on the weekend, Mrs. Angry and I went out on the weekend, uh, saw some comedy, but we, we went to a, a cocktail bar near ACDC Lane called Trinket Bar. It's definitely on my list of places to return to. I, I actually do not go out that often in the CBD. Uh, normally when we go out, it's somewhere around the suburbs where we live. We've got half a dozen places uh, in our local area that, you know, we, a bit of variation on date night. We want to change things up on date night. Um, we've got half a dozen places we like to go to, you know, dinner and drinks. Um, and, uh, but yeah, every now and then the city, but, um, did find, I have found a couple of quite interesting cocktail bars. Uh, and yes, just added, uh, the trinket bar to the list, quite honestly. Yeah, Catherine, that's, that's a big thing. How did I get the bitters to come out of the bottle? Because bitters bottles are usually made to, uh, not let much come out because you only want a few drinks. It was really it was sort of like, okay, come on, fill up the shot glass, fill fill up the jigger, come on, let's go, let's go. This looks like I'm just calling someone a wanker, but yes, okay. Um, now what have I got? Because I over there I've got cola bitters, lime bitters, the standard Angostura bitters. I'm trying to remember all the stuff I've got. I've got some lemon bitters, uh, lemongrass coconut bitters. Uh, I've got one called Tiki Bitters. Uh, got rose water. Oh, I got some recently from uh, this cocktail specialty shop, um, an Austra Australian made, and it's uh, like bush tucker bitters. One was finger lime which is a native Australian lime. Uh, and the other one was lemon myrtle. So I've got some some bush tucker bitters as well. I have a lot of bitters. This is the funny thing, like, you know, I think I was talking to a friend on Facebook, you know, going out to places, and they went, oh, I went out to this place and it was pretty good, but, you know, the bar was good. I think they were trying to, uh, they had like six different sorts of bitters. That's real try hard. Just going, I have more than that at home. It's like uh, the whole cocktail renaissance of the last decade 
is a bit thing. Safa, how many minutes from CBD? I don't know, half an hour? Like from Caulfield? If I'm going train, I'm kind of spoiled because there's tram lines around here too. Um, train's faster. But, yeah, you know, Caulfield to the city is like half an hour. Um, and I'm, on the, I'm on the Frankston line. Frank up. Which is going to go bye byes this weekend for a couple of weeks as they do all the major works for the new city loop. Um, so, yeah, half an hour by train, 45 minutes plus by tram. Tram's slower than trains. Uh, but there'll be a couple of weeks of going into the city by tram. Let's go. I'm changing jobs. This week is my last week in my current contract. Contract finishes this week. Talking to a bunch of agencies about what to do next. Some of them are suggesting uh, that they have something where, if I get it, they might want me to start as soon as next week. Um, I honestly wouldn't mind a little bit of a break. But, you know, money's money. If someone says, we want you to start now, like, well, you're the one with the paycheck. Um, how long does it take to uh, drive? Well, obviously that's uh, dependent on... Um, Traffic. Wait, where's that? I, I was I was actually trying to look it up for you. Get directions. Where is it? Notification. Uh, you know, it's probably twenty minutes driving. It's, it really, really depends on um, traffic. Um, there are a huge amount of area. I mean, you know, it can be faster to get a train in than to drive in because you can really get stuck in traffic. Um, I was trying to get it to tell me, um, wait, where's my, have I got my phone here? I don't think I've got my phone here. Oh, well. David, you don't have passenger trains in Tasmania. That's a bit harsh. If I was to go to um, the city, most of the time I'd be going down Dandenong Road. Um, and so it'd be like Dandenong Road and then St Kilda Road and into the city or Dandenong Road down to Kingsway and up Kings Street into the city really heavily dependent on traffic, 20, 30 minutes. Oh, look, Safa, no one's sane likes driving in Melbourne, but particularly if you're from the bush, it's a bit stressful. No one likes the hook turns. No one likes the trams. Um, it can be super stressful. Got to have the shits just going to the supermarket this afternoon. Um people who apparently don't know how to drive. That is it. Like, seriously, if you want to see me in a genuine rage state, get me in a fucking suburban supermarket car park when it's busy and people can't fucking drive. Oh, my God. That will get me in a rage zone. But, yes. Safa, what's, what's with 70K zones? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what you're actually asking there. Most A lot of Dandenong Road is 70 or even 80K zone because St Kilda Road's 60 or 50, depending where you are. Fox, I, I love walking in the CBD. In fact, it's going to be sunny tomorrow and the rest of the week, I think. I will probably make a point of walking around at lunchtime get some fresh air and some sunshine because we are getting towards the winter days. It's going to be more of my, this is my, my, my weakness in clothing is jackets, coats, various things. 
this is this is just this doesn't even do up this is just sort of go over your shoulder thing this is for the autumn weather I have some nice winter jackets i have two in particular that are quite warm uh i haven't bought myself a new coat in a couple of years maybe i can convince myself i'm allowed i'm allowed to buy a new coat i did see a pretty funky looking place um when i was walking around today actually although i showed, i looked at that case and go i like that I bet it's like $500. I'm not paying $500 for a coat. But I'll have to ask at least. <laughs> Sorry, Lone Spider, that's evil. Someone trapped your L300 with their tiny little car at the casino on the Gold Coast. So you just push the car out of the way with your L300. What a noise those screeching tires made. Oh my God, that was foolish of them. Yeah, we have all we have all the fucking speed zones. Parts Dandenong Road at eighty k, parts at seventy. I think if I went from my place straight across the Dandenong Road, the bit of Dandenong Road I'd hit is a seventy k thing, and then you get to St Kilda Road, which is sixty, and then you get to fifty, and the city's forty. Um, but yeah, I mean there are a number of reasons. When I'm working in the city, I don't drive in. Um, because parking's so fucking expensive. But also driving's quite stressful. Driving is quite stressful. It's far less stress. I mean, uh, uh, okay, public transport is not without stress. If there are delays and cancellations, uh, uh, if the train or tram or bus is overcrowded, those things are all stressful. Uh, 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 sorry. <laughs> but... Um, uh, I like to be able to kick back and read um, or even, you know, play games on my phone. I try to be a bit more productive and read instead of play games. Um, I currently, I'm reading, uh, uh, I think it's classified as a young adult novel by a writer called Scott Westerfeld who's uh, famous for a series known as the Ugly series, really good science fiction series, sort of post-apocalypse thing. It's quite good. Um, uh, but this one is a more recent one. It's called Afterworld. It's, um, it's pretty cool. Uh, and... Um, uh, it's basically, it's, it's quite thick. And what it is actually two novels. It's alternate chapters. One chapter is a story of a young writer who wrote, it, it, it's, it's great because it's a real encouragement to the NaNoWriMo people, the National Novel Writing Month, people who try to write nonstop in November and create a novel. This is a young writer who actually came up with something magic in her NaNoWriMo and got a huge publishing deal for it. And so it alternates between the story of her, the writer, and the actual book she wrote. So one chapter is her, the writer, and the next chapter is her book, which is a sort of supernatural romance. Um, and I don't know, quarter of the way through it, it's good. Very good. He's a good writer. I like his stuff. Um, Okay, what did you read? Tim Watts Wrath on Audible. Nice. I don't even know what that is. I haven't heard that one. We're talking casinos. Lion Spider, you're at the Broad Beach Gold Coast one. Jupiter's on the Gold Coast. I think I already write Jupiter's on the Gold Coast. Crown in Melbourne, Star City in Sydney. I'm not a casino person, quite honestly. Oh, yeah, Fox of Fate. I did listen to Man Yells. I started, the one I started listening to had Steve Shives on it, who I know from YouTube. Um, and it's okay, but I had very weird technical issues with it. Um, I'll try and get back to it, but I had very weird technical issues. I'll tell you what I found, because every time we talk about um, uh, um, podcasts, I say the only one I really like is the Blind Boy podcast, um, and I will stick by that. Uh, you're 
Oh, you go, mate. Um, the Blind Boy podcast. Um, I do. Um, I get a bit into the American political one, Chapo Trap House. They're kind of entertaining because it's Americans who are very aggressively socialist, which is fun. And they have like their friends with an Australian uh, podcast called uh, Bunta Vista. Uh, and I, I know one of the people, um, Lucy, who she's not in every Bunta Vista, but she's part of the Bunta Vista crew. Um, but I did thought I thought I want another funny um, podcast, and I thought, hey, Dan Harmon, who did so many shows, Community and Rick and Morty and other things, he does podcasts, doesn't he? So I looked him up, and his most famous podcast is called Harmon Town, and I'd seen excerpts of it on YouTube, which I kind of liked, and I started listening to one. I didn't really get into it. God, I can't stop the audio. Really sorry. Mm. But he did one. I don't think he does this one anymore. He did it a, cu a couple of years ago. I actually ran for over a year. And it's called Whiting Wongs. And he's with uh, um, an, a writer who wrote for Rick and Morty. She wrote the Pickle Rick episode. I think her name's Jessica Gao. Um, and she's Chinese. She was born in China, moved to America when she was about five. And they discuss issues of race. And it's funny because he's really open with, okay, I'm really stupid about this. Is this bad? Is this bad? What about this? What should I do in this? And he's just trying to be really honest and open, uh, trying to get issues of race uh, and other intersectional po politics issues out in the open. And I'm sorry, Miss Fox Creation, I mean, you're here. I can't stop. Oh, sorry. It's bad. You start yawning, you can't stop. Um, but, yeah, the podcast is called uh, Whiting Wongs. Um, you know, it's a pun on writing wrongs. It's like you have a speech impediment and it brings race into it. And I really enjoy it because Dan Harmon really doesn't give a shit if he comes off badly. He's going like, no, this is the thing. I don't know. What's, what's, what's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. What's the deal? I want to listen to you. And um, also, when you listen to how he talks on this podcast, he, he, he can't finish sentences and he not really stammers, but he speaks in half sentences and repeats words. Um, the way they talk on Rick and Morty makes more sense because it's how Dan Harmon talks. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry for the audience. I don't normally do this. Safa, does the Tea Party still exist? No, I think they got subsumed by the alt-right. Oh, God, Miss Fox. Okay. All those socialist fuckheads. Socialist, sorry. I probably share a lot of ideals with them, but those diehard socialist alliance, Spartacists, none of them, I don't really have a lot of time for them. Oh my god, that was actually that that cognac sazerac is quite because often a lot of sazerac recipes don't have cognac in them. It's just um, a whiskey, normally a rye whiskey, um, with a sweetener, either sugar or a sugar cube or sugar syrup, uh, bitters, and just a splash of absinthe. So it's it's just a, it's an old fashioned. An old fashioned is possibly the simplest of all cocktails. An old-fashioned is just whiskey with a, a sweetener, whether that's sugar or a sugar cube or sugar syrup and bitters, maybe a couple sorts of bitters. Again, if you're trying to be clever with um, an old-fashioned, you get like a sugar cube and um, you uh, sprinkle um, uh, bitters on that and then crush that up and then... Uh, put the whiskey on top of that. And, you know, for an old-fashioned, it could be whatever whiskey you like, if you like scotch or, or bourbon or rye. Noisy Lesbians does sound like a cool band. <laughs> You're right, but Safa, maybe it's the cognac making me yawn. I don't know. I don't know if I'm... God, now I'm going to yawn again. 
Yeah, I, I'm going to start thinking about you because that makes me want to yawn. Oh, and I tell you what else I listened to. Flashback to what we're talking about. I listened to most of a friendly Geordie's um, uh, podcast. And it was, you know, blokes being blokes. Very low fi though. Like the audio was incredibly distorted. Like they weren't using a good enough microphone and they were shouting. And yeah, I really had a problem with that, quite honestly. Um, but yeah, because most people take a bit of effort with their podcast uh, to have a reasonable amount of audio fidelity. Uh, but uh, yeah, no friends of yours. He's got a car's up yawning. This is ridiculous. Maybe I should wind up. The yawning is getting ridiculous. Ah. Okay, so um, yeah, look, I am, I'm going to wind up slightly ahead of my normal schedule, but I can't stop yawning. It's ridiculous. Um, so uh, as per usual, I would like to thank you wonderful people for spending some time with me. It has, as always, uh, been fantastic spending time with you. Uh, uh, and I was here tonight because I'm not going to be here tomorrow night because uh, my physio appointment because I'm old and my body's falling apart. Notably my shoulder at the moment. My shoulder is so fucked. Uh, I originally had to um, go to the physio for my shoulder. And um, as I've said before, you get angry? What was wrong with your shoulder? Oh, I slept on it. I slept on it. It was the whole spooning thing. I'm trying to work out where to put this arm. Guys know this problem. Or women who are the big spoon know this problem. You don't know where to put this fucking arm you're lying on. And um, I ended up really fucking up the fucking muscles in my shoulder to the point where, and this was about a year ago, I, I, I saw it pop up on my Facebook anniversary stuff. About a year ago, I was in so much pain I couldn't sleep. I'd be up in the middle of the night because I couldn't sleep because of the fucking pain. Um, and then I finally went to a physio who has helped a lot. So it's like, how old are you angry? I am, I can complete my, I can completely fuck my shoulder by sleeping years old. And, and then early this year, my fucking knees went, oh my God, I was in so much pain. And he's done a lot of work on my knees. And then a different thing started happening with his shoulder, which was the same problem shoulder. And he said, it's actually a different thing. But it is improving. But it's still fucking... Like, I went to take a jacket off on Saturday night. I kind of twisted the shoulder in a way I shouldn't have. And I was like, oh, fuck. It felt like someone had stabbed me in the shoulder. But it didn't last. Like, the pain I had about a year ago was fucking constant. And um, this is... Uh, it's not called bursitis. He called it capsulitis, in fact. Um, and if it doesn't get much better, I might end up having ultrasounds and x-rays because if it's really fucked i think they recommend surgery which i'm hoping doesn't happen but also i am just old and falling apart i think is the main fucking problem um but i'm gonna go to bed now I'm going to physio tomorrow night and hopefully he'll tell me hey it's getting better good job good job and um i'll get a bit better uh that's what i'm having for so I, I won't be around tomorrow night. Uh, I'll try and make a, a video. On my it's April. Maybe I'll do the old YouTube thing, Vita, video, video every day in April. Maybe I'll do that because I might have some time off. We'll see. We'll see. If you see me on the socials, tell me what I should make a video about tomorrow. I won't do a live stream, but I might make a video. Uh, and I'll probably be doing a live stream on Thursday night again. So... Because I can cheat. Live streams count as videos, and live streams are really easy to do. So if you follow me on the socials, send me ideas for videos because uh, I'm possibly going to make a lot of videos in April. Uh, so, yes, bearing that in mind, I will say good night, one and all. Take care of yourselves. Hope to see you again soon. Uh, but I will say bye for now.